Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Ready Precision. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the offerings in the Niagara Cloud, and that is Niagara Remote. This is a service that lets us remotely get into our JSES and our supervisors without the need for any additional software or hardware or anything of the sort. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of an overview first in PowerPoint, and then we're going to jump into Workbench, and we're going to set up a JSE with Niagara Remote, and I'll show you just how easy it is to do. So first, let's jump into PowerPoint. Okay, so what is Niagara Remote? I explained it a little bit, but in um, some more detail here. Uh, Niagara Remote is a simple, secure remote access service that's available for any of our Niagara devices. That could be a JSE or a supervisor strictly browser based which means you don't have to use the typical VPN software in order to get in to the device and connect but that could also be seen as a negative because a you don't get access to a full network that maybe you would with a VPN software application and you don't have your workbench to use so you're, you're um, only going to be using web HTML5 views uh, that are available to you within whichever version of Niagara that you're using. And uh, some more of the benefits of it is uh, obviously you have that ease of use of not having the VPN software, but you can also have multiple connections open at the same time. That could be uh, you connecting to specific sites at the same time, no problem. It could also be you have multiple texts or you and one of your end users could be connected to the same site at the same time no issue and there's no cost for additional users that kind of thing requirements uh, we need to be using Niagara 410 U7 and above or 413 and uh, above right now there's nothing else above but uh, any version of 413 you need to have an active SMA this is important and that active SMA needs to expire after your Niagara Remote license expires because the Niagara Remote licenses are also a yearly subscription. It's a cloud service after all, uh, and they have two part numbers for that, uh, the NCS Remote, which is gonna be for a Jace, and the NCS Remote Soup, which is gonna be for your supervisor. So what's the super or what's the uh, setup process look like? Uh, first, you're going to get your Niagara Cloud account set up. Um, this requires the usage of a multi-factor authentication. So you have an app on your phone. Uh, you do that one-time password setup thing with the QR code. Uh, you could use any app to do that or uh, Tritium because of the system behind the scenes that makes this work. Uh, they recommend using the Salesforce uh, multi-factor authentication app. That's outside of the scope of this video, um, all of that cloud setup stuff, and we may have a video on that in the future, but for right now, we're going to focus specifically on Niagara Remote and the setup required for making use of that. So that first step, we're not going to look at. Uh, the next step, we will, which is we're going to download and install the CloudLink modules. These are the modules that you use to connect up to the Niagara Cloud and make that communication possible. Depending on the brand of Niagara that you use, these modules may or may not be included with your Workbench install. Uh, we do have the modules up on BP Tech Center, and you can get them from Niagara um, uh, Central as well. Uh, but if you don't have them, they're available in those locations. Then we're going to sync up our time using NTP. It's important because of the way the communication happens. We're going to make sure our DNS servers are set on the JSE or supervisor that we're going to be uh, using because we're going to be using domain names to talk to the Niagara Cloud. If we don't have a DNS server, our JSE has no idea how to get to those domain names. So, important step. Then we're going to make sure that our Workbench uh, browser whitelist is set properly. There's a couple different uh, domain names that we need to add into that, so we'll do that. And then we'll install the Cloud Connection service. This is the actual service that does the communication between our Niagara device and the Niagara Cloud. And then as a part of that service, we'll do a little bit of re a registration to associate it with our Niagara Cloud account. And then we'll be off and running and we'll be ready to go. And I'll show you how to actually connect and use that uh, Niagara remote connection. So now let's jump into Niagara and get all of this set up and running.
I lied to you slightly. We are out of PowerPoint, but first we're going to jump into a browser and we're going to go to NiagaraCloud.com and we're going to log in and make sure that we have a project set up for our uh, station to be logging into once we register our device. So I'll log in here real fast and you'll notice it needs to do the two-factor authentication. My uh, password manager handles that for me pretty quickly. So we're in here now and uh, I can see all of my customers and uh, I've got some projects in here. I'll actually just create an additional one and I'll call this remote demo. And we'll create that and we're set and ready to go for once we register our device. All right, so the next piece that we're going to do is we're going to jump into Niagara and we're going to see if we have the correct modules in order to make our cloud connection happen. So I'm going to open up my palette here. And what we're looking for is cloud link. Um, and we don't see them here. So we're going to assume that the Honeywell version of Niagara doesn't include the, the modules that we need. Thankfully, we are a... Brody Precision customer, so we can go to bptechcenter.com, and I can sign in, and I can go to Brody Precision, because this is where we're keeping the cloud link modules, because they apply to a bunch of different vendors, right? Um, we've got them underneath us and Brody Precision. If I scroll down here to the bottom, there's this Niagara Clouds modules uh, section. And what I'm looking for is 4.13, because that's the version of Niagara I'm running. I'm going to download that. And I'll just download here. And I'm going to grab all the modules inside. And then go to my version, which is Honeywell 4.13.2 modules and do a paste and then I'll close down workbench and reopen it so workbench is back open and if I go to my palette and I look for cloud link we can see those modules are now available to us and the one that we actually want is the cloud link NCS so I'm going to open that up so that we're ready to go once we uh, get to that step but first, we need to open a platform connection to our JACE and log in. And we need to install those modules now out at the JACE. So I'll go into my software manager. It'll do its thing for a moment here to check out all of my modules that I have available and what's available out at the JACE. Okay, so we have our details now, and if we scroll down a bit to the cloud link modules, I'm just going to select all of these and say install, and it's going to pull up the dependencies that it needs, and we'll say okay, because we want those as well, and then we will do a commit. And the station will do its thing, and transfer across those modules. Okay, our modules are now installed and we can double check that by scrolling to the bottom here and we'll now see that cloud link is available out at the or excuse me is installed out at the JSON. So next up we're going to be looking at our time situation. So if I go into platform administration, we're going to make sure our time is accurate so that our connection can work properly with the cloud. We'll go to date and time. Our time and time zone are set correctly. All right, next up, we're going to log into the station. And we're going to go into our services and scroll down here to the bottom, platform services and the NT 
FTP platform service. And we're going to enable this. Say save. And we're going to reboot our JSE so that we get proper time syncing from our time servers. So everything is synced up and we have the correct time. All right, our station has restarted and our time sync through NTP is set up and running. So next we're gonna go into our TCP IP configuration underneath the platform and make sure that we've got our DNS server set. We do here, uh, if you don't have DNS servers set, you're gonna wanna put something like 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. These are the DNS servers from Google. It's kind of a universal DNS server that a lot of people use. There are a few other options available, uh, but these are the easiest to remember to me. <laughs> There's also 1.1.1.1. Uh, so what, whichever works for you, you just need to have these set to a public, well-known DNS server in order for this to work properly. So we're good to go here. Next up, we are going to set up our workbench so that we have the proper uh, addresses in our allow list for the web browser that's in workbench. And in order to get to that, I'm just looking at my notes here, um, we're gonna go to the local host, my file system, our syshome, and our defaults. And then we are going to get to system.properties open that up, and then we're going to do a control F to do a find, and we're gonna look for URL white. Thank you, Dropbox Research, I'm not interested. Uh, URL white list. This uh, option here, and let's see, make sure that there's not one that's already opened up to us and not commented there is not so I'm going to uncomment that line and then I'm going to add in a couple options here at the end the first of which is going to be auth dot ping one dot com and then I need to do Niagara cloud but that's already listed here and then the last one is force.com. And that is it for these. I will save that system.properties. And again, I'm gonna need to close out of Workbench and reopen it in order for those changes to take effect. So I'll be right back once the uh, Workbench is back open. All right, so now we get to the meat and potatoes of things. I'm logged into my station. I'm gonna go down to the config and services, and we've got our CloudLink NCS palette open with uh, the Cloud Connection service. Going to drag that service into our services container. Hit OK. Let it do its thing for a second or two here and insert what it needs to insert. And then I'm going to expand it and open up our Federated Identity Authenticator, which is underneath our authenticators. I'm gonna right click on it here and do a start registration. It's gonna do a little bit of work to make that happen. And you'll see it generates this user registration URL. And we're going to click on the arrow here. And it's going to take us to the Niag Niagara Cloud website. And I'm going to sign in. I'll paste that in for my password manager. And then I'm also going to need to paste in my one-time password. And then it's going to say, hey, what's this device called? I'm going to call this my demo JACE. It's going to ask what the project is that this is uh, for. And I'm going to say this is my remote demo. And the location is WC office or West Conchock and office. I'm going to hit done. 
that Jace is now registered in the Niagara Cloud interface here you can see and we're gonna jump back now into our station by clicking over here and we can see that it's uh, registered underneath the registration state and we're just gonna make sure that that authentication comes through as well and now we're authenticated and we are good to go so next that is all the setup that's required at the JACE. Now we're going to jump into a browser and act as if we're remotely uh, trying to connect into this JACE. All right, so I've logged into the Niagara Cloud in the browser, and I'm going to go to my remote demo uh, project because I know that's where our JACE is located at. And you can see underneath the subscribe services, we've got these three uh, links here to different services that we could take advantage of in the Niagara Cloud. For this demonstration, we're only looking at the remote, so we'll click on remote here, and we should now get, after we log in again, one second, log into Niagara Cloud one more time, just to be sure we are secure. And now we are into RJS remotely. You can see we've got this special URL that's being used. And I can log in now using the credentials for the JACE. This screen that we're looking at is actually coming from the JACE. So I'm going to plug in my credentials. And we're good to go. Everything that you would expect to see as if you were pulling up your JACE uh, directly in a browser connected to the JACE, you can now see remotely from anywhere that has an internet connection, obviously so long as your JACE also has an internet connection. So hopefully that was helpful and informative to you. Uh, just one of the services that's available to us as a part of the Niagara Cloud. Uh, we went over the requirements for that, uh, Active SMA being the important one. And uh, we'll have more videos on the Niagara Cloud products here in the future. Uh, I really think that this one, as well as the backup services that are available to us, Recover, they call it, um, are really helpful and valuable services that I think um, just about any Niagara user can make use of. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.